Vernon Castle, a warm, warm welcome. It's really good to have you. Thanks, Clarence. Thanks for having me, bud. You survived 50 years in this unforgiving industry. How did you? Wow. A whiskey. <laughs> it helps, I promise you. <laughs> it's a tough life you've chosen for yourself. Uh, man, what a journey. Would you make what different choices given, given, given the option? Probably on managing myself properly, I would say. So managing you take the career properly. You take blame for yeah, I do. it being difficult. Yeah, I do. I do. I started off with a kind of a glamorous life and lekakre, uh, you know. Mm. And uh, until you realize that. It's taken its toll. Yeah, it's taken its toll. And the, the, there's too much water under the bridge now. You can't kind of... I uh, know, you know, some, for some maturity is a good thing at a late stage. For some maturity early is probably a burnout. It depends on how you look at it. Yeah. You know, in my case, um, what I do now, I, uh, I kind of like myself better now. More constructive thinking, mm. approaches to things, um, more discipline, I would say. Yeah. And... Um, yeah, one don't dream about those uh, big things anymore. You know, uh, when you were younger, Is you wanted practical? to hit all those big stages and yeah. tear and tear and tear. Is know? that the term tear? Yeah, tear, tear. it up. Okay. <laughs> okay. But um, yeah, I take full responsibility for full response. You don't even blame society. Oh, I mean, how can you? If you know what you are living with, then you're supposed to do the adjustments and do the whole mental thing and approach life the way no. you know no matter what it dishes out to you you're supposed to be out there and you know slide through it yeah. you did <laughs> well i had a choice eh? i i could be a, a teacher or a singer and i except i couldn't sing yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so i didn't have much of a choice i guess well like i guess i, I made some choices early choices um realizing that you're going to marry a woman have children you have to feed them clothe them educate them house them and uh, I opened up clubs where instead I, all I really wanted to be was an artist. But, um, yeah, I, I went into business so that I could sustain myself and my family, you know. Yeah. It's, it's funny, actually. It was a jazz business, right? It was the jazz castle. The like jazz castle about. at the time. The yeah. jazz castle. There's, there's a little saying in the jazz business. If you want to make a small fortune from jazz, you've got to start it with a big one. Um, it's a tough business. Uh, of course it is a tough business. I mean... Look what we were put up against uh, from early, early, early years. I remember an incident where um, Zane Adams, for instance, got to Heathrow Airport. And, um, to Heathrow. Heathrow, yeah. yeah. And uh, he wouldn't be allowed in at the time because of politics, you know, and because of our racial standing in South Africa. And he had to turn around. And, and I, suppose the the way, I suppose the way the government at that time looked at it was that we were not allowed to be ambassadors for our, yeah. for our country. And musicians would have had a lot to say. But how did others uh, About the get atrocities out? back home. How did yeah. Abdullah Ibrahim get out? How did you, Masakela, get hey, out? Hey, they slipped through how the... How did Jonathan Butler get they out? They slipped through the cracks there, man. Is it? Yeah, I think so, yeah. And um, fortunately for guys like Simon Cowell and these guys, they were based overseas. You know, I suppose they could work things from their side. You know, and get these guys in there. Mm. And uh, Paddy Lithorpe and these guys, um, mm. they could work things, you know, but we weren't all that fortunate. And then, of course, we all wanted to also be somebody from your own doorstep rather than um, go anywhere else in the world. I mean, this is, this is South Africa. We are South Africans. Uh, we also have musical statements. Yeah. And more so nowadays, uh, you hear it strongly, you know, how the African feel, the African jazz are coming through. And it's being accepted on, on, on world stages more yeah. than, than before, I would say. Look, 50 years later, clearly uh, there's no regrets. Uh, yes, of course, uh, hindsight is twenty twenty vision. We could have done it so very differently, differently. some of the things, oh, but yeah. the, the lessons were, were wonderful as well. You're still hitting the notes. You're still moving the hips uh, like Elvis the pelvis. Uh, everything's still going for you. Yeah, it's, uh, you have to go lay in the in the bath afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> in a really really hot bath. Yeah. But hey, when you're in the moment, uh, the, the when you're in the aching. moment, you're in the moment. You know. 
I know that you're working on a on a project, and I think it's uh, it's it's such a fitting project where you are going to get onto a stage and you're going to tell your your life story as well. Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to that. I really am. Um, there's so much to tell, and um, so little time, you know. And uh, right now, it's it's always that saying: live live every day as as if it's your last. Yeah. Um, are you going to name names? Um, <laughs> am I allowed to name names? Yeah, listen. Uh, in September month, uh, there's a, a negotiation going on with the Wave Theatre uh, for me to tell my story. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Also, 26th of August, I'm celebrating um, the Jazz Castle. We're having a Jazz Castle reunion at Vitapuma Civic Centre, where... Um, just nice to see all the old faces again, yeah. you know. We, it's, it's had a nice history Lots at the time fun. in its Lots existence. Of fun was you know. there. Uh, somebody says, Great to hear Vernon on Cape Talk. Hi, Clarence. I heard you say Vernon Castle. Wow, says Gail. Lots of fans. More women fans than male fans, I would imagine. That seemed to have been the trend over the years. Uh, not a lot of guys that like me out there. So, <laughs> <laughs> Vernon, I wanted to ask you, I, I did say that you had a rather eclectic repertoire, but it's probably safe uh, to assume that you had uh, a big penchant for, for, for jazz. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. I grew up with jazz. My family, are, um, from my mother's side, are all mus musicians. And I come from a strong musical background. Um. That being said, I was um, the band leader for our high school. Uh, started way, way back, where even my principal was my keyboard player. Wow. Yeah, and he was a jazz lover. So I spent a lot of time with him in, in, in my youth, where we used to sit down and just go through serious jazz standards. Yeah. Um, then I had an uncle, which um, I hate to say this, you know, but uh, where he's kind of tagged the black sheep of the family which is a lot of bull because he's such a beautiful guy. And um, I used to bunk school to go sit with him and, listen, and sing Nat King Cole and sing all these songs. So, yeah, there's a strong, strong jazz influence. And you mentioned all the names except the one that has really possessed you for all of your life, and, that's, and that is Mr. Al Jarreau. Al Jarreau, yeah. I remember listening to this guy for the, for the first time. And the very first song I listened to was Spain, and, and I got attracted. I got attracted to this guy's music and his vocal, you know, vocability and all of that kind of things. And it kind of appealed to me. And uh, yeah, I carried him forward with me. You worked a lot with Munkunku and, and the guys back in the day, oh, yeah. Robbie Jansen, them. Yes. Robbie was also part of the Rockets at one stage. Were you ever part of the Rockets? No, no, but um, we used to have our own bands and share stages and yeah. those kind of things. Nearly also, competitive as well. Yeah, Richard John Smith and all of those guys, we, uh, we shared stages over the years, Yeah, you know, way back. Yeah. I, I know that you went with me to the North Sea Jazz Festival once and you were completely oh, wow. blown away. Wow. Wow. It, well, I remember you giving me a gold pass and I stood like, what, five meters a gold pass. <laughs> away from <laughs> El Jaro. Backstage pass. You know, correct, yeah. backstage pass. For me, it was a gold pass, but... <laughs> And the guy was like right here and, you know, that urge to want to go and join him on the stage because I was so close to him and that yeah. energy that was happening on that stage was mind-blowing, I promise you. Yeah. So, so Vernon, there's, there's still a lot of life left. You're still performing. You gave us two um, future projects that, that's going to be birthed soon. What else yeah. do you do? What does a week in the life of Vernon Castle look like? Oh, I've become quite a homebody. And then, of course, I have my workshop at home. So I dabble in kind of making wooden furniture, wooden mud kitchens for kids. And I, I do a lot of things. And that was all discovered in COVID. I never knew I had it. So there was a kind of a reinvention happening there. And uh, and I must say, I've, I've become quite good. So if you your next bedroom suite, uh, you, you want to have made by me. Push, come on. <laughs> this, is, this is an opportunity. <laughs> a bedroom suite made I by... I actually made one, does it, beautiful does, one, yeah. does it get, come with a signature, replete with the uh, made course. by Vernon Castle? Okay, well, there's something that maybe somebody needs. Um, uh, somebody writes, uh, does he remember the four sounds, Cliffy Moses, that passed away a month ago? Of course he would. Uh, of course, I have many, many shows with him. Yeah. Many, many wonderful memories um, that I have 
working with the four sons. I spoke to Cliffy's uh, daughter yesterday, interviewed her. She's an activist. Yeah. Um, Tanya. 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 Um, and, and uh, yeah, she's also working on, on keeping the memory of Cliffy and, of course, his brother Basil Moses alive and the four sons. I mean, what a band. Wow. Give us a bit of an insight into just the hive of activity, musical activity that Cape Town was. I mean, it was the jazz capital of South oh, Africa as man. well. It, it, was, it's so di- it was so different. Um, that so different that you actually long, long for those moments. There was a lovely comradeship, lovely brotherhood of guys that happened, you know. Although the ones in the jazz field those years were a bit critical of the the pop stars, as the they call them. <laughs> you know? uh, yeah. Um, yeah, because they were doing high, higher grade stuff. Yeah, oh man. Oh man, they were... Th- it was, you know, it's, it's, I'm sorry to say, but it, there was but a lot of the music, a lot of the music I hear today has been done already. Yeah, Pacific Express. Wow, what a band! Because you did mention Zane. Did you ever play with them at all? Share yes. the stage, I'm sure. No, of course. Oh, when Pacific Express um, started at the um, at the show, well, at the Sh- Sherwood, Sherwood Lounge, yeah. they used to do cabarets on a Sunday night. Yeah, and I, I performed cabaret with them way, way back. Wow. So, so you would sing with a band with Paul Abrams. Yes, I would do my show. It's, uh, it's, Jack I Montpellier. did a lot of stuff with them. Which is, you see part of that as well? She was there. Yeah. yeah. I just missed that. I, I, I'm I kind of missed that. angry for my dad not deciding to have me a little earlier, about 10 years earlier. That 70s was a, was a crazy, a crazy decade. Lots of new sounds were born. Lots of new styles came about. Yeah. Vernon, we're going to have to wrap it up right there. Lekker to have you. Thank you.